We're going to arrive at Ampere's law from our calculation of the magnetic force field that we did earlier. We arrived at this field using Coulomb's law and special relativity. And the magnetic field is around the wire where you can take your right thumb pointing along the direction of the current, and then the curvature of your fingers gives you the direction of the magnetic field. Notice that the theta hat takes on different directions depending on where you are. If you're over here, your curved fingers point upward at that point there, tangent to that curve, that's north. And if you're up at this point, the tangent is pointing here west to the left. Well, let's look at the magnitude and we'll take the 2 pi r and bring it to the left hand side and then we're going to look at this as doing a line integral around a circular path where you're a distance r out and therefore when you go around you get 2 pi r you get your circumference and then we're going to bring the magnetic field which is constant at that distance r inside and if we bring that inside then we'll have this integral and when we get the little unit vectors in there theta hat dot theta hat so your little dl here which is going around this circle we're going to think of this as having a little unit vector giving us a direction and it will be the same theta hat so theta hat dot theta hat is one and that gives you this which gets you back to where we started or if you go this way the b times the theta hat is your b vector your magnetic field and your theta hat dl is your dl vector so there you have it that is ampere's law in integral form now if we're going to look at the analogous integral for the gauss's law in the electric case we would have the magnetic field instead and notice that here since the magnetic field wraps around a surface that would be ideal for this is your can by the way so you would have a can here and you would have your length of the can going this way and the magnetic field lines wrap around the label of the can so therefore there is no piercings through the can remember your unit vector for a surface element is perpendicular to the surface so if you're sitting on the top of this can here the unit vector would be upward for the can the differential area and that forms a 90 degree angle with the magnetic field so you get zero so the gauss's law analogy with the magnetic field gives you zero instead of, of something here that's non-zero and we'll see later that this is telling us there's no counterpart to a single pole a single charge plus or minus there's no counterpart here you cannot find a north pole by itself or a south pole by itself so this equation is basically telling us there are no magnetic monopoles so here you have gauss's law no magnetic monopoles and Ampere's law and here's our Lorentz force that we saw earlier how a charge responds to electric and magnetic fields notice that you have to be moving to experience the magnetic field and here are three pictures of three scientists Coulomb, Gauss and Ampere.